Today we're going to do some hat hacks. I'm going to show you five of my, um, I'm going to say tricks, five little things that I've uh, come to learn in my 25 years working at New York's oldest hat shop, JJ Hat Center. And uh, I've gotten written here on this box and uh, I like to recycle paper and stuff. Uh, and we use the backs of paper and stuff. And, if I get a box, I just like out right on the box and stuff, you know. But anyway, these days it's hard to go out and get paper, you know. You don't want to like go buy stuff, so you just use things, you know, more efficient, like efficiently, I guess. You know? But anyway, I'm playing with my Grand Canyon looper here, and I made a little loop, doing like a little A minor to a little A sharp major seven. Listen a little bit here. Miss that loop up a little bit. five special little hacks that I do with hats that um, you may know about if you watch this show. You probably know a few, but you might not know them all. Okay, the first one, number one, the reed, okay? We've talked about the reed and the back seam of the hat. Pardon me. White shoe. Okay. The reason your tight hat is tight and is giving you problems and won't stretch is right in here, in that little tube, that end part. See the shiny part there? 
that part. Okay. That's it's like a wire in there. Not really a wire, but it's a piece of very tough uh, nylon, like a nylon fishing line, basically. No matter how much you tie, try to take a tight hat, pull it over your head with that circle of nylon there, it's just not gonna work. What happens is you stretch it, you give it a good stretch, you mess the hat up, the hat gets a lot of bad side effects from the stretch. And what happens is that thing stretches temporarily. You know how that stuff is, it stretches and it comes back. And that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to make this circle, that oval. So no matter how much you abuse your hat, this one's a little messed up, it's old. I've purposely abused it, but it always goes back to that oval, and, and it has been. You know, I've been stomping on this hat, and it still goes back to an oval shape. That's what the reed does. It's meant to stay stay put. So, trying to get this hat on, you're a 59, and this thing is like a 58.5. It's bothering you, you keep stretching and stretching, and you got this hat stretcher thing, nothing's working. That's what you gotta get, the reed. You gotta just cut the tension, okay? Right over here, okay? You see this reed here, it's covered up with stitches and all that, okay. You wanna cut it right there, a little slice, just ch -ch 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 -ch. Okay, after you made that little slice, you can look inside there, you're gonna see a little bit of nylon thread. It's kind of like taking electrical wire and taking that red or blue or black casing, you know, stripping it off with your teeth and inside is the wire. It's the same thing here. You got a little kind of a fake leather or a real leather tube here. And inside of it is the, uh, the reed. In this case, it's also stitched over too, okay? Maybe it's a good hat maker or something. They stitched over it for reinforcements. Doesn't matter, you just cut through it right there, okay? And underneath there is that wire circle. It's clear, it's just a piece of fishing line. Get your pointy scissor or whatever you got, a needle nose, uh, wire cutters or something, get it under that little wire. Okay, if you have to raise it up so you can get under it, clip it. Okay, so you'll have two little ends sticking out like that, you know? Okay, and that's it. Just shove those points back into the tubes. Stick them in with something toothpick, a little wood skewer or something, the end of a scissor, and whatever you got, a nail, a needle, stick them in if you can, okay? It's generally enough. Um, there are ways you can close that little thing if it's bothering you, you know? You can put a stitch or two over it, or you can, um, you can even use the tiniest, tiniest bit of glue in there, like, so small, like you take a needle, dip it in some hot glue or something, put it in that little part, and then just kind of put direct pressure on it like this. But I mean, so small, you know? Keep it in there, and that's it. It's not gonna do anything. It's just wire, and it's gonna stay there. It's not gonna go out, it's, nothing's gonna happen, but you broke the tension. Now you can stretch your hat, okay? You stretch it, just stretch it. Stretch it firmly, but carefully. Don't jerk it, you know? Stretch carefully, okay? You could do over your knee too, but again, increase pressure very slowly, okay? Front to back only when you stretch, okay? Stretch it a little bit every day, okay? Wear it, keep it away from heat, keep it on your head whenever you can. It'll take the shape of your head, it'll get more soft, it'll start stretching. If it seems like it's far off, like just way off, even with your stretching, you're not even getting close, you can cut this seam, okay? your hat is that small, cut the seam, just cut it. It's, um, there's not much you can do here. You're gonna try to stretch the whole hat. You're screwing up the looks of the hat. You're making stretch marks. Uh, a hat jack stretches only this area here. So it's like good crown stretch part, you know? So after you stretch it, you have to kind of put the hat back together. You gotta take that stair step and blend it at the back. So you gotta do kind of like, you know, steam it, rub it like this. And I put it against a cylinder and I push and rub it against the cylinder metal thing, hat stretcher, you know, and I get that stair step out. But it's like you're you're ruining the, the crown shape and then you gotta put it back together again. Stretching is very inefficient. Um, 
get to the root of the problem. Don't stretch the whole hat. You don't have to. Um, it's one area. It's the leather sweatband, and especially it's the reed that's giving you the problem, okay? If this reed and a stretch, hand stretch, and knee stretch doesn't work after like a week of doing this, your hat was very, you know, treat it like exercise. Do some curls, you know? That's it. Over your knee. If you're a really strong guy, don't break the hat, obviously. Just stretch, okay? Stretch, hold, okay? Doing it continuously makes this thing want to stay like that. Sometimes that gap has to open. It's the only way the hat will get big. So in other words, the only way to get the hat to fit you because it's so tight and far away from your size is to cut that back seam, let it open up, and let the hat stretch to where it should be. And then you could fill that gap with some leather. You could take some leather from an old sweatband, cut it out, and just hot glue it in, you know, so you don't have a big hole in, you know, in the sweatband there. But it's it's not a problem. If you cut that seam, the hat's not gonna fall apart. It's sewn everywhere, okay? So you can cut that if the thing is really, really tight. That's your second thing. Now, if you're really way off and the hat is super stiff, like an open road or something, and it's really shrunken, um, the leather is the source of the problem. If you get the leather out, so you just cut the whole sweatband out. You know, there's stitches right in here. You just cut these stitches carefully, you know, kind of pull and cut them. And then you can kind of yank the band off as you cut the stitches. Do it carefully, don't cut the felt. And you just get it out. And you're gonna see a lot of loose stitches. You're gonna remove them, you know, get them out. But there are some stitches that are holding this band on. They're tack stitches. So those very few stitches you don't want to take out. You can see them. They're obvious what they are. You can find the tack stitch and follow it with your hand, you know. Um, there's one there. So um, that's a tack stitch from the band. It's far away. It's not close to where the other stitches are. The other ones are going to be up here and stuff, you know. So, Taking out a sweatband completely is gonna get you a whole size or more back, one or two sizes. If it's a big emergency and the hat just will never fit, you know, you don't wanna get rid of it, take it out. I have one or two hats like that and it's fine. Nobody knows, nobody can tell, and the hat fits great. These hats, I have two. I have one with a sweatband, one without. You guys never know, right? Um, gazam, there you go. It has no effect on the hat. Um, what does have an effect on it is stretching. That will screw up a hat, make it look really old fast, and the integrity of it. And wearing a hat too tight is bad. It's uncomfortable and it makes you cranky. Um, cut the back seam if you have to, you know. Do what you gotta do, but don't stretch the hat. It's like the worst thing to do. Um, hat jack stretching especially, okay? That's gonna lead me to hack number two, okay? Hack number two is using a hat jack. I have a, um, I guess it's a little hack that you, you do with a hat jack, okay? When you're stretching with your hat jack, I've, I've taught this before, what you do is there's a little half moon piece of wood and then another half moon piece of wood and they're connected by a bar. It kinda looks like an H. And then you put the H inside here, one half moon goes here, one half moon goes there, and you crank it, crank it, it's like a reverse bias, it cranks open, okay? Uh, I've seen it advertised as a shape retainer, a size retainer, bull, it's bull. It's not a size retainer, it's a stretcher. It's for hats that are too tight that need to be stretched bigger. It doesn't work like a shoe tree. Um, I'm telling you right now, it does not. Um, if you're in a certain business for enough years, 25 years, you're gonna sort of gain theories, and some theories are gonna wind up to be wrong, and you'll correct yourself, and you know. For instance, there was one theory I thought years ago, uh, they're in some of my earlier videos, where I thought a raw edge and a long brim and soft felt are gonna equal a hat that can curl easy in the rain. Then, like a year later, or a few months later, whatever, I started to see the same problem with hats curling um, with bound edges. Long brims, soft brim, very soft, you know. 
um, not snappy and hard, and they had binding. And I was wrong. It was not the raw edge. The raw edge had zero, nothing to do with it. It might have been a little bit harder to take care of than, you know, some other edges, a little bit. I'm arguing maybe it's more just like it kind of shows more. It shows the waviness more obviously, but that wasn't it. The theory was wrong. Um, it was more like thin felt. When felt is just made too thin and companies make a hat too lightweight, they're selling it as a lightweight hat or they're just cutting corners and trying to save some money. And they say, okay, let's use a 10 ounce felt. No, let's, let's go down to a nine ounce. Um, yeah, corporate says we gotta go down to a 7.45 ounce. What, what? That's not gonna work. Well, we have to. We gotta do it, uh, we gotta pay these bills and you know, this and that, whatever. Um, it, it gets thinner and thinner and that's a way for a company to save money, okay, and continue giving you nice looking hats, nice hats made out of fur, made out of this, paying their employees, keeping the lights on, um, without you seeing any difference in quality. Now, if they take a sweatband and they stop using leather and they start using like a paper coated with like a leather paint, you know, like that bonded leather stuff, fake, people see that instantly. They're like, these hats are such crap. They don't even have real leather sweatbands. It's, it's something a customer with, you know, the half a brain can figure out. Um, as far as everything else, it's a blind item. Nobody knows if a hat is good or bad. That's why, you know, sites like this are so popular that people want to ask me, they're like, yo, Kev, how is this, you know, what, do you like it, you know, do you guys get any problems with it? Um, that's the only way to tell sometimes, is really to just, you know, use it or sell it and let it run its course and see how it is. Um, trust a name, I guess it's a good thing, but, you know, companies go up, up, they stay on top, and then they go down, down, and then they go up, you know. Certain brands are on top, and then certain brands are not. Um, certain brands are on top and do really good, and then people find out they're not that great, and it takes a few years, and then they go down. Um, so, you know, you never know. Um, there are some companies that are legendary, and you, you trust them. So, what you do is you look for thickness of felt, okay? Some hats are gonna be more lightweight, um, they're going to be thinner, so they're going to curl easier, okay? Other hats are going to be a little bit more felt there. They're more substantial. You can see it. You can feel it. And, um, you know, sometimes there are very soft light felts that are really good. Um, softness is a good thing, um, but sometimes, you know, having a little body to the brim is good too, you know? It helps you get a little control. Um, but having very, very soft felt that performs very well means the felt has to be super high quality. Um, in order for felt to work, it generally has to be a certain like minimal thickness, you know, to hold the weight of water, hold the weight of rain and snow, and um, you know, not to lose control and start curling as soon as moisture or humidity hits it. It's just too thin. It needs weight. It's kind of like hair. When you're, you have curly hair and it's short, it kind of grows up, up and outwards like an afro. But when it starts getting weight to it, and you have a lot of it, it starts growing down. You know, you look like one of those rock guys, like Howard Stern or something. You know what I mean? Greg Brady, it grows up. It gets longer, afro, it starts going out and down a little bit. Super long, you got the Howard Stern, it's got some weight to it. That's what you want with felt, you want some weight. Um, it, you know, you got to be able to hold something on there, like, you know, you know, it can't be totally floppy, you know, this is thin, soft felt, but it does, it has some body to it, you know, I can relax my arm here, kind of, you know, for the most part, um, thinness can be tough. If it's gonna be really soft and thin, the quality has to be just, you know, really good stuff. Um, so that's that's just a, a rant and that's kind of a tangent. Here's the hack, okay? Hack number two is when you're using a hat jack, okay? You get it in, you center it. Get it centered so it's not like you don't want it to stretch diagonally or something, okay? 
look at the bow, look at the seam, you know, look at the pinches in the front and stuff. Try to get it nice and even. You got it set, okay? Now, check the depth of the hat jack, okay? How far it's going this way and that way, okay? What you want the, to do is take the end of the wood, okay? Here's the wood is, is going from this finger to that finger, okay? You want the top of the wood to be equal with this line here. So in other words, when you start cranking, and this piece starts cranking out, 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 out. It, you don't want that to happen here. You don't want it to be like, that's gonna look really obvious to have like a line here that's coming out. So what you do is you hide the bulging part here on that seam and they can't see it. This part is coming out, it's bulging, but they can't really tell because it's like this new color kind of. It's just like a really clever way to hide the stretch, okay? So what you do is you put the thing in, you center the hat jack, and you steam it just in back. You're gonna steam it in back here, okay? The hat jack's in. What you're doing is you're heating up the seam. Remember I told you about that back seam back there? Okay. If you crank open a hat too far, the first thing to pop is that. This is gonna pop. So what you wanna do is heat it. You're superheating it with steam to make those stitches more elastic. They become wet and elastic and they stretch more. So what happens is you'll crank, you'll feel resistance. You'll hit that with steam, soften up the stitches, hit it, hit it, and then you could crank some more and you feel it open up. Crank, 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 crank. Sometimes when you crank it a little tight, right, get it tight, when you hit that seam with the heat, as soon as you hit it, you start hearing it creaking. <laughs> what that is is the hat. The hat is stretching from the steam. It's opening up. You can hear it creak just from the steam alone. It's nice and tight. Get some resistance. Steam the back steam. This the back seam more. Get it hotter, hotter, hotter. Open it, open it, open it. But you get the top equal with this line. Don't do it up there or down here. It's going to be a really obvious and ugly stretch. Line it up with there. That's the hack. Okay. Steam it from the back. What you're doing is you're first of all allowing it to stretch more by softening up the steam, the, the seam. You can't steam it from the inside because you'll burn the leather and shrink it. So you steam it from the outside much slower. It's like a slow cook, you know, like a double boil or something. Um, but it's good, it's hot, and it's, it's like a wet heat too. Um, the other thing is, because the heat is only in the back and not in the front of the hat, you're causing the stretch, that little bulge, to happen only in back. In other words, the stretch happens where the heat happens, so it goes back, back, back. But when the person looks at you, they see nothing. They see a, a normal hat. There's nothing there because all of the stretch is hidden in the back on the back seam. Huh? I'm a smart guy, right? All right. Let's get to, to hat number three as soon as the, uh, the sirens go. My, my window is closed, actually. All right, hack number three is hairspray. Hairspray is going to stiffen your Panamons or your felts, okay? If you got no, nothing happening here and you want it to look more like this, okay, what it is, it's become too soft. The first step is to stiffen. So you want to stiffen with hairspray. Use the ultra super hold kind. Make sure it's misty and not spitting and spraying little drops. Um, good misty. You can change caps. Spray caps change. Anybody who did graffiti as a youngster knows that. Um, so what you want to do is get a good can, Ultra Hold, Rave, Swab, Aquanet, whatever you got. Use that as your stiffener. Only when you need it though, don't do it unnecessarily. Um, cover the sweatband, make sure it's covered. You know how to do it. I've showed you a few times this week. Put a bowl of tissue or a hat jack in there. Spray it even, okay? Leave it upside down. If you got a fan, put the fan on it. Shape your brim even a little if you want, but try not to touch the top. It's probably best not to really do that. Um, 
um, or do it from underneath or something. You shape it later, okay? You can put it against the table edge and get a nice straight edge. What you're gonna do is let it dry completely in the fan, an hour, two hours or something. Real good dry. If it doesn't feel like it's got a little crunch or a little stiffness to it, repeat the step. Do it again, let it dry. They always have to dry well between steaming. So you can't steam a hat that's not 100% hard. It's a, uh, a series of hardening and softening this sort of hard coating. That's what steaming does. For instance, uh, if I want this hat to have open pinches like this and to stay, what I have to do is make sure that there's enough stiffener here. If not, build it up with some spray, let it dry, okay? Open these up and then steam it like this. And then when it dries, it will be like that, nice and permanent and hard and stuff. If I want to create a new shape now, I could steam the front, pinch it, put you know, two fingers in the middle, whatever, get my new crease there going. But steaming won't work unless you have a little. Gotta have a little. Doesn't have to feel stiff but it can feel like uh, like gravity has just brought everything down. There's nothing. Then your hat becomes like a lampshade, just like a piece of cloth, like a uh, pillowcase or something, just down, like an old Woodstock hat or something. Um, you need some stiffener for control. The hairspray is a great hack. It's got the same active ingredient as a lot of those stiffeners. It's just like acetone, kind of like a cheap varnish kind of thing. It's a crystal clear, works good. Don't breathe it in, wear your mask, keep the windows open and stuff. If you're doing felt, you have to clean the felt first, brush it off, and turn up that loop. Uh, brush it off with tape. Get packing tape and tape the felt down really well, dust it before you spray. Cover the sweatband and never spray the band. Uh, I tend to spray only the underside because I'm afraid after I do like a hundred coats of this stuff, there might be some buildup, which you don't really get, but it can happen. It happens more with wool hats, not so much with fur hats, but I figure if there ever is buildup, I don't want it on the top. Um, so I generally do the bottom, and also I'm afraid of getting the trimming and stuff. I'd rather just cover up the sweat, do the bottom where it's neat, you know? Um, it's easy to cover. That's about it. Next hack, all right, oh, yeah, this is a good one, all right. So we did the cut the reed, we did the hairspray, we did the hat jack lined up with the band, okay? This one is pretty cool. This is how do you get rid of these wrinkles? See the wrinkle on that? Okay, that comes from stacking your hats. You put one hat on top of the next, the top hat squishes this band down, it just pushes it down in a very bad way. So you should always separate them if you're gonna stack them, separate them with a piece of plastic, like a, you know, a half of a plastic bag, a, or a hat dust cover, or a piece of saran wrap, put it over like an X, um, or a rim. Make yourself a ring out of cardboard or foam, even better, like a belt, okay? Staple the belt together, or tape it. Uh, staple, staple is usually fine, and uh, just close it, you know, close it together, and you make a ring, kind of a belt that doesn't go really close, but you know, it's out here. Give it a little slack so it's not choking the hat band. And that way the next hat will sit on top of the ring and this band will be protected and covered by the foam. That's an industry standard hat rings, foam rings. So if you're ever in JJ Hat Center area, if you want like one or two of them, you can ask if they have extras, they'll give you a couple of hat rings. Um, you can make them yourself out of foam, even cardboard works. Cardboard is fine, anything will work. Just make a ring like a belt, belt it, and bring it around, staple it together like a ring, and it should be just a little bit bigger than your crown. You can make 10 of them and just stack your hats into, you know, two piles, five and five, or three, six, nine, and then flip your piles upside down so that they're sitting on their crowns. Stack them like this. You know, with the rings. You do that in the closet. Um, hat rings, a bit, that's a free hack for you. You know, I just gave you that one. But um, how do you get rid of these wrinkles? Okay, so I guess this would be, yeah, this would be the next, next hack. We just told you about that one. All right, the wrinkles, you gotta wet this band, okay? Get two paper towels, 
clean ones, new ones, without any uh, colored patterns on it. It has to be a white or something. First one, soak it with some water, okay? You don't want it totally dripping, like dripping, dripping, but, you know, pretty soaked, okay? What you want to do is dab it on this band and saturate the whole band. Just keep touching it carefully. Spin the hat, okay? You'll see the hat turning, the, brand, the band turning dark brown as it's saturated, okay? You want it to be as wet as possible, but you don't want to get lots of stuff over here, you know? Don't go crazy, don't let it drip. The second paper towel, the dry one, is to catch any drips that go here or here. You're gonna get something going, oh, just take the second dry one, touch it to it, it'll disappear, you'll be fine. It's just water, okay? Take the wet, just touch it to it, get the entire band saturated. Even if it's the wrinkles only in one place, keep doing it anyway. You want it to shrink. You're gonna shrink the band and the bow, if you have no wrinkles in the bow, you can skip the bow, okay? Um, but the entire band itself has to be saturated even. You don't want it to dry at uneven rates and stuff. Okay, saturate it, dry any drips with the second paper towel, okay? Then take your hat, just put it somewhere on a sunny windowsill or something like that. Um, let it dry. It could be by a, a heater. It's not going to kill it, but, you know, it, it just, uh, you know, a little sun is fine. Um, generally, I don't like to put any hats with leather bands near heaters because it's bad for the leather. But if you don't have leather in there, yeah, you know, you could keep it in a, a fairly hot room. You just want it to dry, like, in the sunshine, like on a counter in the kitchen, a little sun, and um, let it, let that thing tighten up. As it dries, it should tighten. Um, the smaller wrinkles will disappear. The really big ones, it's not going to do. If it's really big, what you need to do is it's got to be pulled, you know, it's got to be slapped. So what you really have to do is you have to go to one spot here. I mean, I'm talking about big wrinkles, you know, something like this might not come out. It'll come out like 50%, but you'll still see a little shadow of it like that, you know? So what you need to do is you do the wet thing that I just did. And then you have to open up a couple of stitches, this one and this one. The bow itself is on separately. If you take off all four stitches, the bow will fall off. So just take off these two, peel it back, you know, you could hold it here with a piece of masking tape or something. And then over here, the band under it, you have to take it and you have to pull it tight. You gotta pull it, okay? And then take a little piece of masking tape or something and just tape it under there. And once it's taut, just tape it nice and tight. Put the bow back on top of it and just sew those two tack stitches again. Um, what I do sometimes is if the, uh, the wrinkles in the slack is beyond one of these tack stitches in here, like, yeah, then you gotta take out a tack stitch. But just pull, 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 tape it down so it's tight. Put the bow back on top of it and give it those two tack stitches. It's kind of like a, a cheap way of tightening it. But uh, try the water first. The water will get rid of most, like, not serious, serious wrinkles. Um, you'll get rid of these two. These, this stuff, you could usually just hit it with very heavy steam, steam the hell out of this part, and then take your brim brush and brush upwards. Up, up, up. As you're steaming, just brush, and then do one of these with the brush. Press and go up, up kind of hold it. And you'll get those to go away. That's again from stacking hats, it's bad. Um, you can get rid of those with just steam, but the water will also get rid of it. All right, here's the last half, guys. This is half number five. I guess number six. I gave you a little bonus half here. Okay. What happens if you lose your hat? Okay. Maybe you leave your hat in a taxi. Uh, it's late night. You're running out of the taxi. You go home. You know, you can't wait to get in. So you, you, know, you just leave it. Um, this guy's a good Samaritan. He wants to get it back to you, but... He doesn't know how to, okay? Put your name inside it. Put your number, your email, your phone number in there. Um, what I do is I take a business card or something like that. I write, if found, and I just put my email. If you're not embarrassed or scared, put your phone number too. Just write, if found, and then you put your first name. You can write, Kev, and email. 
you can even write reward if found. Um, if you got like a 200 to, you know, three, $400 hat, you know, you see a guy like that returning your hat, you're probably gonna want to give him like 20 bucks anyway, at least, right? So just, you know, I'd probably give him 20 bucks, at least 10 bucks I'd give him. So uh, give the Good Samaritan 20 bucks. So just write that, just write reward if found. That way the guy finds it, he'll get it back to you, you know? Um, if somebody finds this thing they want to give it back to, they can't. So um, put your name in there and don't just tuck a card in there because those fall out. What you got to do is, I used to do that and they do eventually fall out, is you got to just put a little tape here or a tiny bit of glue and then just attach it to the inside of the sweatband, okay? And then, you know, you could soften it up a little bit too. You won't feel it or won't you won't see it from the outside. But that way, yeah, reward it found. Taxi driver finds it, he's like, hmm, nice hat, oh wow. Damn, nobody's got their name in. Ah, name. Smart guy, must be watching Kevin's show. Yeah, yeah, he is. Okay, cool. Gets it right back to you. Your dream hat is back, okay? So put your name in there. Um, I would do it. If it's somebody who's gonna keep your hat, they, they couldn't care less about your name tag. They're gonna throw it out the first moment they can. But somebody's gonna get it back to you, you know, now they can't get it back to you. Put your name in there in a little business card and make sure you attach it or something so it doesn't like fall out. And that's it. Uh, here's another one. Um, moleskin. If you have a, um, a straw hat and you're afraid of sweating up the top, your bald head is touching the top or touching here, buy this stuff. It's called Dr. Scholl's Moleskin. It's a sticker with like this kind of uh, felt it's almost like the uh, like a soft pad with like soft kind of plush stuff on it, like a uh, the soft part of Velcro, not the uh, the sticky part. And um, you just cut little circles and you put it inside the roof of your crown, like right up there. And that way, when your head touches it, that thing absorbs it. It's just like a nice cotton soft surface um, on top of a you know a piece of foam with a very strong sticker backing. Put that inside your um, your straw hats. If you're having problems in the pinches with your open rows, if this is touching your head and you're afraid it's gonna start sweating it up and making two yellow stains, mole skin. Little circles or, or ovals, whatever. Put them in there, there and there. It's cool, you could write something on it, you know? Take a ballpoint pen, right? You know, reward if found or something. The other one, write your name. I don't know, but... Uh, you can get this stuff and uh, it's cheap and it works very well. Um, it's what they call a tip sticker. They put them inside of uh, straw hats because a full lining is too hot. So they generally put a sticker here, like a little padded uh, sticker made out of hat lining. You know, they make like a little shield or medallion and they'll put it there or sometimes just a circle of it. And it's thick, you know. But uh, it's not nearly as good as the Dr. Scholl's moleskin. So buy that stuff. It's like this weird old guy stuff that, you know, you put like, I think in your shoes or something when you got like calluses or bunions or something. Um, but yeah, stick it in there. Uh, an old time uh, hat wearer turned me on to that stuff. And it's really good. It's good for tightening up your hat. It's good for as sweat guards, for felts, um, for anything. You, know, you can just uh, use them everywhere. So, um, there you go. Bonus hack number two. All right. Everybody, um, I love every one of you. Thank you for all the great support and the kind notes. Um, I almost never get anything negative except for like really good constructive negative criticism like, you know, Kev, you should improve this. Uh, you know, you're getting a glare in the window and stuff. And, and I'm like, okay, thanks. You know, fix the glare. It's gone now. Um, your audio sucks, Kev. Fix the audio. You know, things like that. Those are things I'm like, thanks for the feedback, you know. It's not like, ah, oh, that's Jake, uh, your mother. You know, I don't feel like that. So, um, thank you for um, all the really good heartfelt comments. And uh, it's getting to the point where the, the show is kind of getting bigger now. And it's hard for me to chat with you guys all day because I have like four or five of you that I'm kind of trying to keep up with. And um, it's getting tougher. 
harder to uh, write the comments for everybody. So some of the comments are gonna be starting to turn into uh, thumbs up soon. So don't be offended or think I'm mad at you. Um, it's getting very time consuming spending, you know, you know, like a couple of hours on comments and emails every day. So, um, and if I don't do it and I let them stack up, then it becomes like this long thing. You just kind of like scroll and then scroll. So I have to kind of do it once a day. So if anybody uh, you know sees me not answering as many chats or as many um, emails and stuff, it's getting it's getting a little harder now. So um, bear with me, and uh, thank you everybody for the beautiful support. Um, the channel is doing very well. We're averaging seventy five new uh, subscriptions every week. Um, about 10, 11 a day on average. And um, we have some new uh, equipment coming and stuff. There'll be some new guitars and things coming. And I'm hoping uh, if anybody has any hats that they want to donate, something that's brand new, um, that doesn't fit them, or they just hate it or something, um, you know, you could uh, donate it. People have mentioned uh, I should get a Patreon page for people who want to, you know, donate and stuff. I'm kind of working on that. I'm thinking about some kind of perks that I can give uh, patrons if I do that kind of thing. Um, it might be something like, uh, you know, a free half hour or free 45 minute phone consultation, you know, to help you with your hats, like a Skype session or something, um, things like that. Um, but uh, I have to work out something, you know, that makes it worth being a patron, I guess. And um, yeah. You know, for now, that's something that you guys can do, is you can just uh, bear with me and uh, understand it's a little harder for me to keep up with the uh, chats, comments, and emails right now. They're getting really long. Um, so, that's good. It's really good. It's very good. And um, 75 new subs every week is good because it's also, it's raising, it's going up. Uh, my analytics kind of look like this. You know, they're going straight up. And um, on my end, I'm trying to improve the way things look. I'm trying to keep things concise. And I'm trying my best to keep the jams at the beginning a little bit shorter for those who are, you know, not into it, and some are. But uh, that way, you know, you could just stop at the end when I start really jamming. You know, I'm gonna just go on some long Grateful Dead space trip for like, you know, 20 minutes. You know it's over, you could just turn it off. The hat info is done. So, I'm trying guys, okay? You know. I'm only human, my flesh and blood, scooby do. All right, let's play you guys out. You got some hacks, right? You like hacks? I like hacks. I always watch those hack shows. Some of them really suck though. Those like kitchen hacks and stuff. Oh yeah, that's uh, Tales from the Tour Bus. You know that song? That's awesome. Tales from the tour bus, right?
Thank <laughs> you. 